Hi, my name is Katrina. I'm a Capricorn. I enjoy short walks to the kitchen. Hi, my name is Jonathan. Um, I'm very well traveled and I love Batman. So John and I met online and that's really embarrassing to say, but I was dating this awful guy and he was just short and, <laughs> and ugly and old. And my sister was like, you need to be dating some younger, good looking guy. So I broke up with the guy and then she was just like, go on Instagram and meet. I'm like, I'm not going on Instagram to meet guys. Like, It turns out her sister, Tracy, was going through guys' pages trying to find her a potential boyfriend. And she kept sending them to Katrina and Katrina kept saying, ooh, no, no, what is this? And apparently they got to my page and Katrina was like, oh, yes. So she kept sending me all these like uh, screen names of these guys on Instagram. And I was like, no, 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 no. Ooh, yes, who's that? So I like saw his page and then I requested him as a friend. And then he um, accepted my friend request, but he didn't like any of my pictures. So she sent me a friend request and that was that we we didn't like any pictures, we didn't DM each other. We followed each other for a couple months and then I moved to Memphis. My first day of orientation, I went home that night and I went to watch the Cowboys play uh, at a local wing stop there and uh, I ordered some wings. I was enjoying my night myself and I had a food allergy to the sauce or whatever it was that they used for it. and. Uh, the next morning, it, I had to go to the hospital. I, I couldn't breathe well, I, I couldn't keep anything down. Uh, I was taking pictures of me in the hospital bed trying to get some sympathy likes. And Katrina apparently was in that hospital up from Tampa and she saw me check in. And I was so confused because I was like, how can he be here? Doesn't he live in Alabama? So I went to his page and yeah, he lives in Alabama. So I'm like, how is he here? Like, he's a good stalker if he knew where I was gonna be working tonight. I went home and I, and I saw his Snapchat on Instagram, so I just sent him a message and was like, hey, saw you were in the hospital, hope you're not dead, and, and he wasn't. So, come to find out that he was in the hospital because, from eating chicken. So about a week later, uh, my Snapchat goes off, and I've just got video after video after video from Katrina. And I'm like, well, what is this? So I started watching it, and I see Katrina at her worst. <laughs> oh my God, it was horrible. Like, I had no makeup on, hair was a mess. I had this long t-shirt, was all stretched out, and I was just on the phone like, you mother, like just cussing him out. And oh God, it was so embarrassing. And I accidentally sent it to him, and then he responded and was like, uh, I don't think that message was for me. She is cussing like a sailor at one of her friends and her friend's husband. Yeah. But, and then we started talking after that, and then we talked ever since. So, it definitely wasn't love at first sight, but it was definitely a connection at first sight. Um, I, I couldn't stop smiling around her, I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, you know, holding hands, all of the, the new couple things just went so effortless with us. And I would say within a few days, it, it, you know, it started to throw us down that path of, wow, like, have I met the person that I'm gonna spend my life with? Like, this is just too perfect for each of us. No, it wasn't. Well, it was love at the first sight of those Instagram pictures, because those pictures. I flew down there. Uh, she meets me at the airport. I, I, she tells me she's outside parked. Uh, so I'm on the transit train and I'm not expecting to see her. You know, I'm, I'm just minding my own business. I get off the train, I walk off, and I happen to look over and there's Katrina with her iPad with like a homemade sign with my name, you know, welcome John. And I'm looking at her like, wow, I'm out of my league. <laughs> and so, uh, I see her, we hug, uh, I, I'm at a loss for words, I can't really speak because she's just so beautiful to me. 
I really thought like, oh wow, you know, I, I've hit the lottery here. It was so awkward. Like at first sight, when we were in person, he came to visit me in Tampa for my birthday, and uh, which was just a couple weeks after we had started talking. And when I first saw him, I don't know, it was just so awkward. He was acting so weird. Like he on the phone, he was like talking all this shit. Oh, can I say shit? I couldn't think of anything to say, you know, she wasn't talking much. I thought like, oh wow, this was a mistake, you know, should I have came, should we have just kept this, you know, the way things were. But as soon as we got back to her place and kind of, you know, settled down, it was literally just uh, an immediate connection and it just took off from there. Oh, the proposal. So all of our stories, first of all, this whole video, all of our stories are gonna be completely different because John tells the longest stories and he doesn't know what he remembers. Like, I don't know, he probably remembers what he had planned, not what actually happened. So me and Katrina went on a European cruise in uh, August and I knew that I wanted that to be the time in which I proposed to her. We had all the scenery around us, uh, just romantic cities. You would be crazy to pass an opportunity like that up. It's a once in a lifetime moment to tell someone you wanna spend the rest of your life with them in that type of setting. The only dilemma I had was where am I gonna do it? How am I gonna do it? Because I want it to be perfect. The next day, I knew we were going to the Vatican. I grabbed her ring out of the safe and I put it in my pocket. I knew that was gonna be the day. I, I, it was so easy for the idea to just pop into my head, but I knew it would take some work. So we get to the Colosseum. It was our first stop in Rome, and they have metal detectors at the Colosseum. Now, I'm a guy, I don't know what's gonna set it off as far as a wedding ring, so I'm sitting here with this ring in my pocket thinking, how am I gonna empty my pockets and not let her see this? So he gave my ring to this girl that was on the tour with us so that it wouldn't like go off when he went through. And I'm just like, why would it go off? I don't know, but I didn't know this. But so she's been walking around all day carrying my ring. Like, I was just like, are you crazy? Like, we don't know her and I'm, you know what? She could have switched out that stone or anything, but. We finally get to the Vatican and it seemed like the tour was forever before we got to the Sistine Chapel, which is where I knew I wanted to propose that. I reach my hand back and the lady drops the ring in my palm and I'm, I'm holding it so tight because I'm nervous. And I whisper to the tour guide and I show him the ring and he looks confused for a second and then he just, his face is just, you know, oh my God. The tour guide was like pointing at something on the ceiling and I look up and then I turn around to say something to John and he's like, he's down on one knee and I don't know what he said. I was just like so in shock and I felt so stupid because obviously I knew that was coming and I cried and I'm like, how stupid am I? Why am I crying? I couldn't believe it. So I got down and the words came out so seamlessly and just from the heart and she shed a couple of tears. We embraced the Sistine Chapel, clapped for us. It was an amazing moment and I couldn't have picked a better opportunity to do it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that was, that was a proposal. It was really sweet and very well thought out and yeah. <laughs> I have never been that girl that like, oh, when I grow up, I'm gonna have this marriage. I'm just like, I never thought that I would get married and never really wanted to. So I never planned a wedding. So now that I have, it's, it's so much work and we have two totally different things that we want. I would want it to be very elegant and like old Hollywood glam, just beautiful and classy. And John wants it to feel like a party. So, um, like, I wouldn't care if there was no music there at all. He, of course, wants a DJ, and I just want people to sit down and have a nice, quiet, and he was just like, we're not having a $100,000 tea party. So I was just like, all right, fine. My vision of this wedding is, is going to be so beautiful. Uh, the venue that we have chosen, the people that we have there that we love, um, 
the, the attire, I'm, I'm assuming the gown that she's gonna wear is gonna be beautiful because she won't settle for less. The food is amazing. Katrina has snapped me pictures when she went to do the tasting. It looked phenomenal. My family, her family there, they're both a lot of fun. I see them dancing and laughing and having a great time. I see people walking away from this wedding and saying, wow, I will never experience a wedding like this for the rest of my life. I want it to be the end all of all weddings and it, because she deserves it, we deserve it. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for both of us and I want it to be just that and I want everybody to know this was our wedding. So the moment that I knew I was in love with Katrina and wanted to spend my life with her was again, one of our FaceTime moments and people talk about these moments and you never believe it until you go through it. But I'm sitting there or laying there in my bed with my iPad in front of me talking to her about to say goodnight. And you get that feeling like, wow, I don't want to say goodnight. I don't want this moment to end. And then it, like a ton of bricks, it just hits you like, this is the woman I want to spend my life with. I love this woman. And from that moment on, I knew. When did I know? I knew when all day John had been talking about eating Chinese food and he would not shut up about it. He was like, oh, I want Chinese food. I'm going to get this. I'm gonna get he talked about it all day. And then before we left the house, he said, what do you want to eat? And I was like, I kind of want Mexican food. And that's what we ate. And I was just like, he puts whatever. Oh, God, <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <clears throat> all right. We don't have time for this, <laughs> like, I need these lashes to stay on. Um, no, but really he puts whatever I want before what he wants. And, and I need that because I want what I want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's, um, it's important to know that you're the most important person to somebody. And I feel like that. John, I love you more than anything, more than I've ever loved anyone. Katrina, I want you to know that this means everything to me. I've never loved somebody so immensely in my lifetime. I think you're wonderful. You've added so much value to my life. Every day, I'm, I know that I'm grateful to have you. And I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world that not only have I had the chance to choose you as my partner, but that you've chosen me in return. I love you.